everybody, and welcome to SA Rugby Magazine. We got the Six Nations starting. I got Mark Hewahane, our rugby expert and analyst, analyst uh, in the studio with me. Mark, welcome. Thanks, Kev. Uh, I can't say it's going to be a great Six Nations because I honestly don't believe that. Because as we were saying off camera, the thing that makes the Six Nations is what? The crowds, the atmosphere. You know, you've been to those matches, you grew up with them. Wales against England, be it in Cardiff or at Twickenham. For atmosphere, and I've always said this to people like New Zealand, South Africa, yes, it's a great game, but there's nothing that beats that showdown because of the crowd. And and it's all these matches are going to be devoid of it. There's going to be that hollow feeling, emptiness. And uh, we've no. seen it in the soccer, we've seen it in our own domestic rugby. Uh, yeah. Nothing beats seeing thousands of Welsh fans celebrating on Caroline Street as you eat curry and chicken off the bone. Yeah, it's no better. <laughs> no. Especially when they've just beaten in England. <laughs> oh. yeah, goosebumps. Um, <clears throat> let's, look at, uh, let's look at who we think one is going to do well in the Six Nations this year. Can I start with who's not going to do well? well Italy. Okay, so uh, someone asked me, what do you hate about Six Nations? I said the fact that Italy plays in it. Because they've never been good enough. Their last win was round three, 2015, 22-19 against Scotland. They have lost 22 successive Six Nations matches. They host uh, France in the opener. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have some form of empathy and sympathy for those players. How do you prepare every year? Well, isn't it, isn't it more that the, 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 the world rugby is, is missing, you know, just is behind the times to keep them in the competition, you know? But you know, the, 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 the obvious swap is they go down into the B division and South Africa goes into that A division. And uh, you have a very different Six Nations. Uh, I would love that in the future because then you've got six teams that, that can play. Couldn't knock shit out of each other. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, Italy, always a waste of time. And, and I feel for Franco Smith, uh, the former Springbok, who's, who's their coach. He's just working with players who aren't good enough. It'd be interesting to see how France goes. There's expectation on them for the first time in a long time. They, uh, under Fabian Galti and Sean Edwards. Yeah. Well, you really rate Sean Edwards. Uh, so I think the best, best defensive uh, coach in the world with a great understanding of union and league. You know, he was this league sensation for Wigan, for Great Britain. But what you find with a lot of the league coaches that come over, they, they tend to bring league elements to rugby. Mm. But he's got a full understanding of rugby as well. And wherever he's gone, He's been successful with the Lions, with Wales. And you just look at the difference with him not being with Wales. And the, the key there was, if you can go to France as an outsider and you can get French players to be disciplined, to not concede penalties yeah. and to keep their line and to improve their conditioning, you've got a special quality. And uh, they say that his mixture of French and Welsh that gets spelted out at the training ground mm. uh, is something to behold. Yeah. Uh, Flock Saliers, the former Western Province uh, uh, player who just around the corner used to play many a great game for the South African Western Cape Police side in Pinelands. He's uh, been with them for a season now. The kicking coach has improved their kicking. Um, I chatted to him earlier in, uh, in the week. Excited for it. He says working with Galtier and with Edwards has just been one of the best experiences for him. Mm. You got the two He's very charismatic, Galtier. Yes, very charismatic. And again, you know, he came and he played here. Mallet brought him here to play for False Bay for a season mm. uh, before he went on to, uh, to play for France and become the captain. It's France, he's been lurking in the wind for a decade. Uh, he's successful whenever he played, where he coached at Toulon. Mm. It was when were they going to appoint him? And then mm. they did. He's brought in the right kind of He's brought in a very good foreign-based uh, element into his coaching team, but kept his team as French as he possibly can. The, uh, the uh, their, their experience in that cup, whatever it was called last... last uh, the Nations Cup, yeah. Thanks. The, the, you know, in terms of having to use his young... He got to bleed a lot of, uh, a lot of inexperienced players, which I think will, sh will, will bold, what, bold, bode well for them in this tournament. Yeah, he, uh, he had, could only play those players for three matches. So he used about 60-odd players during, that, dur during the event. And then the final at Twickenham, he couldn't use any of his senior players. Yeah. And he took those baby, the baby French side, and they were ahead on 79 minutes. Mm. Went into extra time, unfortunately lost about three points. But the, the, uh, the positives they would have taken from that. Mm. 
And for the first time ever, France, over the last two under 20 championships, had been the dominant force, mm -hmm. uh, where it's always been traditionally South Africa and New Zealand. So there's a, a hell of an exciting French 20-year-old uh, crew that's coming through, and it's blended well into the senior, into the senior structures in top 14. Uh, I like what I've seen with France. It's, it's again... It's hard not. Yeah, but the one thing about the French mentality is, and it's a bit like the South African one, when they've written off, they, they can knock over anyone because they seem to find something. They don't like to play with the favourites tag. And they've been made kind of like joint favourites or just marginally behind no, England. They, they, you, you know, they're not mar you, Oh, no, sorry. What, what, what are their odds to win the Six Nations? Yeah, you can get 3.4 on France, two, two, even money on uh, 2.05 on England. Yeah. Um, Italy's looking pretty good at 6.25, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's between those two, isn't it's it? It's between That's those a, two, and the fact that the match is uh, 13th of March, has been played at Twickenham, you would Gives think... Gives it the edge to the, England. The edge to but England, in a but year with COVID, how much of an edge is that? Exactly. So... I'm, I'm really interested to see how this French side shapes. Uh, everyone's talking them up. Clive Woodward said they're the favourites for the World Cup 2023 because they are the hosts. Mm -hmm. uh, 2007, they had a fairly decent side. They imploded at that World Cup. They lost to Argentina in the league stages. They lost to Argentina uh, again when they in the third and fourth playoff. Got knocked over uh, in the semi-finals quite comfortably. They, they were poor at that tournament. And a lot of their players said it's, they couldn't handle the expectation of being at home. Uh, I think this is a different French team, um, but they need, they need, as Galtier said, uh, played f uh, five, won four, 18 points last time. England played five, won four, 18 points. Points differential, they were still second. He said they need to win a tournament mm -hmm. uh, because th they have to win it, otherwise it's a regression as far as they're concerned. So I really do hope uh, that they come through and they win it, and purely for the fact that I don't want England to win it, you know? Well, as, as a Welshman, I, I, believe it or not, I don't either. <laughs> um, and as a Welshman, you're going to suffer a bit. Uh, you're going well, to Wayne Pivik's been yeah. a disaster. Yeah, some Kiwis have been good for Welsh rugby, and some haven't. And um, I just uh, we spoke about this a couple of months ago. This obsession with changing something that's successful. Had he come in, taken what Warren Gatlin had built for twelve years, moulded it a bit more, polished it a bit more, and over a period of time stamped his own kind of style on it went in completely changed uh what he felt had worked and wouldn't work again in the in in the modern era and i've seen that a lot with good coaches who do well at club level or super rugby level who don't understand test rugby mm. and then they feel they've got to come in they've got to play uh, attractive rugby they've got to play uh to entertain people and they lose six in a row. I'm they... just kind of wondering what sort of ego he has. I don't, I've never met the man, so I don't, I don't know. But I mean, it strikes of, you, you burn down the house of something that was beautiful and now we've got, you know, Wales have lost seven of the last 10. They lost four straight to Ireland. Um, you know, the three wins out of those 10 were against Italy twice and Georgia. So it's sh shambolic as far as I'm concerned. In terms of a Welsh Ireland uh, Six Nations, I would normally be excited. I'm far more excited for the Super Bowl this weekend. Uh, Wales, and this is one of the things that I like this weekend from a betting proposition. You can get a 63% return on uh, Ireland to beat Wales. Wales haven't been Ireland in, in four tests. And the tests, you know, the tests that uh, Ireland beat them up badly in the last three matches, you know. So it's good value, that bet. I'm going to be putting down some money on that, about 2,000 Rand. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think, I think that's an outstanding bet, Kev. I think Ireland will win comfortably. Hmm. They just still have a, a ruthless edge under Farrell, even if they don't quite have the sophistication yeah. they had under Joe Smith. But you look at the same players that are playing for Wales, they played on the Gatlin. They, they, it's just that discipline isn't quite there anymore. Uh, half of them don't seem to have bought into the way Pivak wants to play. And it's as if he's still trying to show who's the boss in this. In the, in well, if you, if, you, if you want to wonder about personalities and the effect of, of, of one person, you can look at Chelsea, uh, new, new manager replacing Lampard. They haven't given up a goal in three hours now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and identifying players that the other guy just refused to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'll be surprised if Pivak takes Wales to the World Cup. Um, if, if he does, it's because they can't afford to get rid of him and they've committed uh, in a contract. 
But I thought it was a poor appointment based on them getting carried away that he had done well in the domestic leagues with. Mark, I'm amazed that he still has a job. As a Welshman, I don't know many Welshmen that want him to be coaching Wales. He's been a massive disappointment. Like I say, you know, getting up and saying we've got to beat Georgia. Jesus, I mean, would you ever hear those words coming out of Gatlin's mouth? No. Not at all. So that to me is a, a good one. you got the Calcutta Cup. 150th time the two will play in the 138 years of the competition. Um, Twickenham them again. I like the fact that Finn Russell's healed his rift with Gregor Townsend. He's one of the, the, the most charismatic tens, and he really can play. Um, four South Africans in the mix uh, in the 23. Duan van der has done quite well. He's starting on the wing. Mm -hmm. Jakub van der Waal, the replacement fly off on the bench. Oli Kebel, who was, uh, played for the Stormers. He kind of is there with a, with a passport. The others, uh, Via Pianali, has been playing there for about five years, so they on residency. I just, I just think it will be a, a fairly comfortable win for England, tight for 40 minutes. Mm. Uh, and then the class of England will come through. The one interesting thing will be to see how uh, the Saracens boys go because they haven't been playing in the, in the Premiership. Uh, they've been keeping themselves busy uh, on conditioning and, and playing at a, at a level that... It's like they're playing against school kids. Yeah, so it'll be t interesting to see if they kind of step into it and, and are able to just find their ability because of the quality and class of players that they are, someone like a... Atoja and, and, and Owen Farrell, but yeah, uh, you know, Eddie Jones has been very vocal about they don't need to be playing in the, in the Premiership, they don't need to be playing yeah. top rugby as long as they're with him and they've got their conditioning programs. Uh, they may just find that pace of the game is a little bit different. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, it's, uh, it also depends on what the weather is. I'm not even going to look for, for a forecast because it's London, you know, it's, uh, the weather on that island is... Uh, it's pretty tumultuous at the best of times. So it dep depending on the weather, it could be a very uh, very slow pedestrian game. Uh, but I expect England to win um, that game. Yeah, and I think from a South African perspective, the Lions tour will go ahead. Whether we play over there or they play here, it's not going to be cancelled and it's certainly not going to be postponed. So South Africans should be watching every weekend when the four home unions are playing because that's going to be the British and Irish Lions, they play the World Champion Springboks in, in July and August. Uh, and I mean, those are test matches that we just can't wait for. And most are expecting the England side to make up the bulk of that Lions mm -hmm. side. So they will have extra motivation, these players. They're playing for position in the Lions. And Warren Gatlin will be watching with great interest. So a lot of needle in the Six Nations, mm -hmm. but as we keep on saying, that glorious intensity that comes with 70,000, 75,000 being there will be absent. And let's hope that this is the last Six Nations, like it was the last Curry Cup that we see uh, matches being played devoid of capacity crowds. Who are you picking to win the... the, the is there going to be a Triple Crown winner? Is there going to be a Grand Slam winner? Or, and who's going to win the... Cha is it going to be... Who's going to win the championship? And, and are there going to be those two things accomplished in the, in the I think England will win all three, uh, the Grand Slam, the uh, Triple Crown and, and the tournament. Uh, I would love to see France win it. Mm. I just think the fact that it's going to be at Twickenham. And the one thing about, if you look at the French side last year, they were on such a roll and they went and got beaten by Scotland. And they had knocked over Ireland, they had knocked over um, England, mm. knocked over Wales and you thought, and the one you, the one gimme was Scotland. They went there and got beaten. So with France, they were always capable of losing that one game mm. that you just think how, where you can't see England losing those kind of games. So I would say England to win them all, but my God, it'd be nice if they didn't. <laughs> yeah, I actually <laughs> fancy France in terms of the the, the, the price as well, at three point four to win the championship. Um, Scotland against England straight up is not the ideal game you want. I mean, the ideal game is, is Italy, isn't it? And, that's, yeah. and France have got that. So it's a way to sort of rest some, rest some players. It's an easy game for them. Um, and build a bit of momentum. So for me, I like their schedule. Um, and I, I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to take that step forward this year. I just think they're going to get a bit old, in, old long in the tooth. You know, I, I just think France are on the right trajectory right now for the next World Cup. Well, my heart is certainly with, uh, with France. My head 
still at the moment with England, but not out, not because of choice. Okay. And what do you think? Who do you think is going to be the top point scorer in the in the in the tournament? Owen Farrell. Yeah, you do, you, do, you know, two point five four. You have to look. He's not bad value. I'll be putting money down on him to be the top point scorer. I think they will score a lot of points, but um, I think they may come undone when it, when, it, when it comes to playing France. And don't forget, it doesn't matter how bad Wales are. Uh, <laughs> I saw in '89 when I was there um, for a tour uh, that. Um, Wales had no chance. They were wooden spoon. They had the wooden spoon uh, already, and they came to Cardiff. And uh, we just have a way of raising ourselves for for England. And um, yeah, I, so I I like France this year, and I like Owen Farrell to be top point scorer. And I'm hoping to watch some interesting rugby on the weekend. Yeah, I know. Look, it's uh, there's there are good quality players out there, and I mean the one thing Gatlin can do is really put together quite a potent Lions squad. Uh, you just have to go back to the World Cup semi-finals. England being there, uh, Wales being there, Ireland. They're not playing to the to to the potential of those players under Farrell, but there's still five or six world-class players in that in that side. So with 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 the stuff that's going on in the UK right now, in terms of they've got an absolute, in my opinion, humble opinion, not the best leader in the world to say it politely. Um, lockdown, serious lockdowns. With, with, with no end in sight. Why we might as well play the games here in empty stadiums than play them over there in empty stadiums. Yeah, I think uh, my understanding is if it comes down to an empty stadium scenario, it will be played here. Yeah. There is still the hope that uh, that come J- July, August, September around that period, that crowds will be allowed back over there. The, I, I saw the vaccinations. Um, they reckon most of their country will be vaccinated by uh, by end of April. Uh, and then you're going into the summer as well. So the lure of a flip tour mm. comes with the potential of crowds. Yeah. Uh, if there's no crowds, then it's FMB Stadium, Lofters, and, uh, or Cape Town Stadium. And, um, well, maybe so. That's because maybe, maybe the government will see a bit of common sense and, and say that, okay, well, you know, they let the rage in Belito go ahead, but they didn't let any let people in to watch some rugby or some soccer. Maybe they can, like the Super Bowl's on this weekend, and 25, they're, they're allowing 25% capacity. 25% of the, of the of, so they're allowing 25,000 people into that stadium. So hopefully our governments can start looking at, at uh, what is working elsewhere, and, uh, and let us get back to living. Yeah, and, it, and it, it takes one match to be hosted, and to show that it can be hosted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw that in Australia as well how they integrated 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, and done very professionally, and people were very responsible. And all of a sudden, there was atmosphere back in the games. Mm. Uh, And it can be done in this country. Uh, I just think it it needs a little bit of creative thinking, but a lot of rational thinking as well. Yeah, so who's winning this weekend? I got got Ireland to win by six or more. I've got England to, to edge Scotland by four, and France to, beat Italy by 18 plus. Yeah, I like the, the, the France one, double digits, 18. I think it'll be a... F- I think Ireland's actually going to win a bit more comfortably against... Uh, I think that's a double digit yeah. game. Yeah. And um, and England, a double digit, but not a comfortable double digit. Mm. And when I say double digits, it could be... You know, you could be 5.10 and you're getting an intercept try at the end. So, But I do, I do think... There, I don't think there'll be a, a single game that's got a single score differential in it. Okay. So again, capping, uh, take Owen Farrell for most points to the top point scorer in the tournament. Uh, for me, take France to win the, the, the tournament and uh, take Ireland this weekend straight up uh, at 62% return on your money. Mark, thanks very much for coming to the studio. And thanks, Kevin. Enjoy it. And maybe the, the, the Welsh guys do shock you. Well, you never know. They usually do. Yeah.